some of those over on YouTube and the stream that will be seeing this in a separate recording. I do this live uh, doing Blender and Krita on the same day. Right now this is the Krita section that I'm recording separately. But if you wish to see it live, uh, you will probably have to wait and for that I will do the Blender section first. I am learning right now Blender and Krita at the same time during every Tuesdays. Um, I already have both open, well, still waiting on something to close actually there. Okay, there we go. And I'll be going through the Krita tutorials for me to actually learn uh, how to use this Photoshop-like software. I have never used Photoshop, I cannot pay for Photoshop anyways, and I've never used any software like it. So I have no idea how it works, how the tools work, and if what it, and how it may differ from Photoshop. I've seen probably my brother using it, but I'm not entirely sure. Like, he's the one who recommended me this software. The main reason for me to learn Krita right now is well, there's two main reasons. Since I'm learning Unreal with my friend Strange Boy Jim, I um I wanna one maybe use it to make 2D assets, maybe maybe even textures for whatever I make on Blender, and to maybe eventually make uh, my own 2D model, or if I end up doing more on the Blender side. Maybe I do a low poly one there, and I just need to make the drawing to work from that. And now we can throw in probably in a third one, and that's maybe eventually maybe commissioning some art or something. I don't know. I do not have a drawing tablet or anything, so that everything will be done with my mouse. So let me switch over to the overlay. So this is what the software looks like. And since I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to ignore these two. I had a quick look at these, and this is one has a little bit more of the advanced stuff, and that's not what I'm going for. It's just well installing the the thing, downloading, and installing the thing. <laughs> so let's go with the get started section first. I have not looked into this one. Of course, it has obviously the, these two, which are not relevant as again. But let's start with the basic content I guess and my goodness this is a basic content a little bit big and I guess I'll go through this stuff here well actually no this is just all leads me over to this stuff so I get never mind I'm fair warning I'm no artist. I can't draw for shit, so do not expect like something too fancy, like anything like this. <laughs> Ned's that's a long way from me at making anything pretty. I just need a lot of practice and like I said, this is going to be just every Tuesdays on my live stream. If you're seeing this on recording, then yeah, you'll probably see it like once a week. Since as soon as I'm done uploading the next day, I'll be uploading this. Uh, let's see, so even from this it says that it starts with roster and vector. Let's actually read this first part. If this is your first uh, foray into digital painting, this page should give you a brief introduction to the basic but important concept required for getting started uh, with digital painting in Krita. I think that's how it's pronounced. I have no idea how it's actually pronounced. Although, very, uh, very lengthy, this page tries to give a brief overview of some of the Krita most important functionalities. It tries to help you grasp the functions of various menus and buttons in Krita without going into minute details. Oh, and 
also, uh, since Blender is going to be the main thing, I'm going to be trying to learn these session, Create sessions will be uh, roughly an hour. I won't push it too far. Also, not to overwhelm myself between the Blender and the Creator stuff. Now, since the first thing is uh, Raster and Vector. I think that's pronounced Raster. I guess I am no artist. So, I'm going to probably struggle with a few things. That and English is not my main language, so sorry if I struggle with some of the words. And also, hopefully, my audio is actually working. I think it should be working. Also, sorry the fact that there is, like, no music in the background or anything. I didn't have time to look for a any, like, playlist that won't get me into trouble with copyright. Hopefully, by next Tuesday, I might ha find a way to have music running in the background while I go through this stuff. Anyways, let's carry on. Even though Krita is regarded primarily a, as raster-based application, which I don't know what the difference is, it has some vector editing compatible. Uh, compatibilities? You mean compatibilities? I think this is misspelled. As well. If you are new to digital painting medium, it is necessary that you first get yourself acquainted with the concept of raster and vector spaced images, of which I am, uh, I don't know either, so hopefully this, this explains it to me. In a digital image, a pixel, pic, a pixel picture element is a basic and lowest element in, 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 an, in, Im, in an image. It is basically a grid of point each this plane's specific color. Raster editing is uh, manipulating and editing these pixels. For example, when you take a one pixel brush, which is colored black, and paint on the white canvas, in Krita, you are actually changing the color of a pixel beneath your brush from white to black when you zoom into the in and see brush strokes you can see you can notice m many small squares with colors these are pixels so I guess this is what it's referring to. And I do see sort of like the variation on the shading. Like it goes from lighter all the way to black. Each pixel is assigned a color. I don't know. Hopefully I don't have to worry too much about that. At least not yet. When, if I do get you like, I don't know, pixel art, then yeah, this knowing this stuff might actually be relevant for me. But I'm not going to get to that just yet. Right now, I need to learn how to draw to begin with. <laughs> In contrast to a uh, raster image, vector graphic images are based on mathematical expressions. They are independent of the pixels. For example, when you draw a rectangle on the vector layer in Krita, you are actually drawing paths passing through points that are called nodes, which are located on specific coordinates on the X and Y axis. When you resize or move these points, the computer calculates and redraws the path and this plays the newly formed shape in to, uh, to you. Hence, you can resize the vector shape to any extent with, without any loss on, in quality. In Krita, everything which is not a vector layer is raster based. I hope I'm pronouncing this properly. Raster. Image, view, and window. 
Uh, oh, before I continue, it is nice that they actually take the time to explain the difference between raster and vector, because I did not know either on this case. In a painting program, there are three major containers that can that make up the workspace. Im image, the most important one in the image is, is the image. This is the individual copy of the image that you can open or create via the field dialog. Create that allows you to open the file as a new copy via file menu or to save it as a new file or make an incremental copy incremental an image contains data regarding layers color space of image and layers wait why does it have layers twice canvas size and metadata such as cre creator date created and the PI, whatever that is, etc. Krita can open multiple images at once. You can switch between them via the window menu. Okay. I already see like maybe a typo here because that's layers twice, which makes no sense. And might maybe tell me what DPI is supposed to mean. Like I said, I'm no artist. What is DPI here? If someone knows, let me, let me know down in the comments below. Because the image is a working copy of an of the image on the hard drive, you can do a lot of little saving tricks with it. New makes a new image. That's explanatory. When the process, when you save. When you press save, you make a new file on the hard drive. Open makes an internal copy of an existing image. When you press save, it will overwrite the original existing image with your uh, working copy. Open existing document as untitled document. Similar to open, um, however, save will request you to specify a saving location. You are making a new copy. This is similar to import in other programs. This might be useful if you are using the same image, but you are making actually something different with it. Like maybe if I were to make a, a new PNG, for example, I want to have different expressions, but I need to set each one of those frames as a separate image. At least with the software I'm, that I'm using at the moment. Create copy from current image. Similar to open existing document as untitled document, but with the currently selected image. Save incremental version. Allows you to quickly make a snapshot of the current image by making a new file uh, with a version number added to it. Okay. I don't know if I'll actually be using that too much. I, I don't see much use to that. These options are great for people doing production, uh, production work who need to switch between files quickly or have backup files in case they do something extreme. Krita also has a file backup system in the form of autosave. Backup files are in crash recovery. You can configure these options from the feature from these features in the general settings. Okay now I understand why I would use that. So to make a backup if I'm doing like major editing on it or maybe experimenting using an existing file. Uh, you view the image via the view. Uh, a view is a window 
onto your image. Krita allows you to have multiple views and you can manipulate the view uh, to, uh, to zoom, rotate and mirror um, and, and modify the color of the way you, s you see an image without editing the image itself. This is very useful for artists as changing the way they view the image is a common way to diagnose some common mistakes, like uh, a drawing with a skewed towards one side, mir mirroring with the M key makes such skewing easily identified. If you have trouble drawing certain curves, you will en enjoy using rotation of drawing. And of course, there is zooming in and out for precision and rough work. Hmm? Hey, thank you there for a file. Um, Live 16. Okay, so I see this and be using this probably a lot like having this to see what it's looking like while actually doing the editing on this Which again, uh, don't expect me to draw anything Great because I am no artist. I'm just getting started with this stuff and I'm gonna need a lot of practice Okay, uh, let's carry on Multiple views are possible in Krita via window, new view, image, image name. You can switch between the uh, via the window menu or the control plus tab shortcut or keep them in the same area when sub window mode is active in the settings via window title. Talkers. Dockers are little sub-windows in Krita interface. They contain useful tools like the color selector, layer tracks, tool options, etc. If I continue, I didn't think about it. Does Photoshop have anything like this? Since I can't get Photoshop and this is supposed to be a Photoshop-like software, I know I don't recall seeing my brother when he used Photoshop with this. I don't recall him actually using that. Or maybe it had it, but he never really needed it. I wonder now. I'm, I'm actually curious now. Let me know when it comes to love. Does Photoshop actually have something like this? This function? Hmm, let's carry on in the meantime. The image above shows some the uh, Dockers in Krita. Uh, which is probably the tools option. Brush press presets, advanced color selector, and layers. This is something I'm going to have to get used to using, because <laughs> since I've never drawn, I've never really thought about layers too much, but if I am ever to make a avatar of myself, I'm definitely going to need that, especially for when it comes to rigging. Window. If, if you've used a computer before, uh, you know what windows are. They are big containers of your computer program. Krita <laughs> allows you to have multiple windows via window. Okay, by window, new window. You can then drag these to another monitor for multiple monitor use, of which I don't have, and I don't see myself actually using that. If I'm gonna do one project, I'm gonna stick to that single project. And I'm not going to switch to something else until I either like give up on a current project or I finished it. The image below shows an example of multiple windows on Krita. Does anybody even use this? Like, uh, what use would you have for having multiple windows out at once? Like, I don't see like maybe having two projects out at once, but I don't see why you would do that. Unless you like having one with a reference and the other one with what you're actually drawing. But then in the why we use a Krita window, you can use uh, any other image software. 
I mean, the Windows have like the an any image viewer if you having that sort of like a um, reference or something. Uh, canvas in Krita. When you create a new project in Krita for the first time, you will see a rectangular white area. This is called the canvas. You can see it in the image below, the area marked by the red rectangular line. Pretty obvious. When you save a painting as a JPEG, P PNG, etc., or take a print out of the of the painting only the content inside this area will take this taken into consideration anything beyond it is ignored create the store information beyond the area you just won't be able to see it this data is stored in a layer I guess it's actually like you're making a large image, but you may like trying to make a pose, but you don't want the whole thing to actually be visible, just specific parts. You want to be like drawing outwards just to make sure you get the sizing and positioning right. I think I saw Speed Painter do something like that before. Layers and comp compositing. Like a landscape painter with uh, first painting the sky and then the furthest away element before slowly working it his way to the foreground element, computers will do the same with all the things you tell them to draw. So if you tell them to draw a circle after a square, in on the same spot the circle will always be drawn later this is called uh, the drawing order the layer tracks is a way for you to separate elements of drawing and manipulate the drawing order by showing you which layer are drawn when uh, when and allowing you to change the order they are drawn in and also apply all sorts of other effects. This is called comp compositing. Hello there, Lai16. How you doing? This allows you to have a line art above the color or trees before the mountains and edit each without affecting the other. Something you're going to have to get used to. Krita has many layer types. Each layer type is unique and has its own use case. Paint layer. These are raster layers and the most common and default layer type in Krita. You will be painting on these. Vector layers. This is a layer type on which you draw vector, uh, vector graphics. Vector graphics are typically more simple than raster graphics and with a benefit that you can deform them with less blurriness. How's the learning process going? It's slow. It, it, I will take my time on learning this stuff. Uh, even after I learn this stuff, I'm probably gonna still struggle like I said uh, in the beginning. I am no artist, so I'm gonna start drawing some hor horrendous stuff probably. <laughs> but practice makes perfect. Right now I'm learning how to use this tool because I've never used anything like this. I don't even have Photoshop and I can't even pay for it. That's why I'm I chose to go with a something that my brother recommended since he has experience with Photoshop himself. From his days over at on college. Tell me this was very similar so that I'm gonna learn this. 
and of course blender is the main thing i'm going to try to learn so the krita sessions are gonna be shorter like about an hour while well, blender is gonna be hour, an hour and a half to two hours uh let's see uh group layers these allow you to group several layers via drag and drop so you can organize move apply mask and perform other actions to them together this might help me when i start decide to make my own avatar through krita at least my 2d one i might need to rely on this grouping stuff to make it a little bit more efficient and when I probably move it to any rigging software it might auto uh, group my layers maybe I, I don't I haven't messed with that yet uh, mittens could you not rub your whiskers on my legs they make it itchy clone layers these are copies of the layer you select when making them they get updated automatically when changing the original. I guess it would be useful if I'm making like two of the same thing but mirrored and I do need them to look like the same, kind of like the eyes for example. Uh, file layers. These refer to an existing image outside of Krita and update as soon as the outside image updates. Useful, or useful for logos and emblems that change a lot. Maybe even useful for making thumbnails. Maybe once I learn how to use this properly, I might then start making my own thumbnails. These layers are filled with something that Krita can make up in the fly, like um, colors and patterns. Filter layer. These layers help us to apply some filters, which will affect a composite image made for all of the layers beneath them. Okay. Guess it's just to make an effect over the image, and if I'm understanding that correctly, you can manipulate the contents of the layers with tools and give me a second to drink some water I was getting dry tools help you manipulate the image data the most common ones is of course the freehand brush which is the default when you open Krita there are roughly five types of tools in Krita. Paint tool, these are tools for painting on paint layers. They describe shapes like rectangles, circles, and straight lines, but also with freehand paths. The, these shapes then get used by the brush uh, but the brush engine to make shapes and drawing effects. Vector tools. This is the upper row of uh, of tools, which are used to edit vectors. Interest. Interestingly enough, all paint uh, all paint tools except for except the freehand brush allows you to draw shapes on the vector layer. The result objects won't use the brush pre preset for outline, unlike the ones made on the paint tool on normal layers. Mm, why does it not use the freehand brush for vector? I don't know if I prefer to tell me why it wouldn't do that. Hopefully, maybe down along the line, once I get to a more advanced stuff, I it can explain that to me. Hopefully, selection tool. Selections allow you to 
edit the a variety specific areas of the layer and are working on without affecting the others. The selection the selection tool allows you to draw or modify the current section. This is like using masking fluids in traditional painting methods but uh, whereas using masking fluids and film is often messy and delicate selecting selections are far easier to use wait masking fluids I've heard of masking tape but masking fluids that's the first I hear guide tools these are tools like uh, grids and assistant probably something I might end up relying on a little bit maybe transform tools these are tools that allows you to transform your layers or objects on the canvas all tools can be found on the toolbox and information about individual tools can be found in the tools section of the manual brush engines brush engines as mentioned before makes a takes a pass and ta and tablet information and adds effect to it making a stroke engine is a term Krita develops developers use to describe a complex interaction set of codes that is the core that is the core of the core for certain functionalities and is highly configurable in short like the engine of the car dri drives your car and the type of engine and the type of engine and its configuration affects how you use your car the brush engine drives the look and feel of the brush and different brush engines have different results may and be careful would you now is not the time Kitty cat's been a little bit needy. I guess I'll take care of her once I'm done with this for today. Krita has a lot of different brush engines, all different effects. Uh, left is pixel brush. Pixel brush? Are you sure? That doesn't look very pixelated. Center is color smudge brush, kind of obvious. Right is sketch brush. This doesn't look like pixel brush for some reason to me. Like I, I don't see, I don't notice like any pixels or anything on it. For example, the pixel brush engine is simple and allows you to do most of your basic work, but if you do a lot of painting the color smudge brush engine might be more useful even though it's slower to use than the pixel brush engine its mixing of colors allows you to work faster when you need to blend or mix colors I guess I would use that if I'm like trying to make a shadows on and an image I'm trying to create like an effect as if light will be hitting from my side and I use a different color to create that effect I wouldn't know like I'm no artist so that's just me guessing if you want something totally different from that uh, the sketch brush engine helps you make messy lines and shape brush engine allows you to make big flat uh, big flats qu quickly there are a lot of cool effects inside Krita's brush engines so try them all out and be sure to check the chap the chapter on each
which I probably might as I go along. You can configure these effects via the brush setting drop down, which can be quickly accessed via the F5 key. These configurations can be saved uh, into presets, which you can quickly access with the F6 uh, or the brush preset docker. Brushes drawn with colors, but how do computers understand colors? Uh, let's see, let's do this color section and and then I'll, that'll be it for the Krita for today. Colors. Humans can see a few million colors, which are com uh, combinations of electromagnetic wave lights bouncing off a surface where the surface absorbs some of the some of its light when painting uh, trend when painting traditionally we use pigments which also absorb the right light wave for the color we want to have but the more pigments you combine, the more light is absorbed, leading to a kind of murky black mittens. What are you scratching? I'm I'm looking at you, mittens. Don't play dumb with me. Okay, now that gets being mischievous. Okay, where was I? All right. This is why we call the mixing of paints subtractive. As it subtracts light, the more pigments you put together. Because of that, in traditional pigment mixing, uh, our, our most ef efficient primaries are three fairly light colors cyan blue magenta magenta red and yellow a computer also uses three primaries uh, and uses a specific amount of each primary in the color as the way is stores colors However, a computer is a screen that emits light, so it makes more light, which means it needs to do additive mixing, which adding more and more color lights results in white. This is why this, uh, this, the three most efficient primaries as used by computers are red, green, and blue. Per pixel, a computer then stores the value of each of these primaries with a maximum depending on the uh, bit depth. These are called uh, components or channels depending on whom you talk to. These, it, this is the red channel uh, of the image of a red rose. As you can see, the petals are white here, indicating that those areas contain full red. Uh, the leaves are more darker, indicating the lack of red, which is to, which is to be expected as they are green. But this is like Okay, I'm guessing they're using a filter here to make that effect. And the amount of these colors is determining how it looks. Though by default computers use RGB, they can also convert the CMYK, the subtractive model, or a per percentual model like lab like lab in case 
this is just a different way of indicating how the color relates to each other and each time it usually has three components the the exception uh, here is grayscale because the computer only needs to remember how white color white a color is this is why grayscale is more if efficient memory wise in fact if you look e at each channel separately they also look like grayscale image images but instead white they just means how much red green or blue there is Krita has a very complex color management system which you can read more about here, of which I'm not going to click on that. And I think I'm gonna leave it there for Krita, since there's still plenty more for me to go. I'm a little over halfway on this basic concept part. And let's see. And next I'll probably go to, I don't know which, I'll need to still find the rest of the tutorials to actually figure out how th things work. Maybe like I'll draw on this side menu mainly probably. But anyways, uh, I'm actually a little bit tired. I have been using, I have been doing a lot of things today that's why blender wasn't as long as i was planning on making it and for and for those watching this video you know, don't worry about the blender section this uh, these videos will be separated on their own respective playlists blender on one side create on the other and yes i'll be uploading both separate videos on both youtube and vstream and for those over on cake well you can always follow me on either either of those and find all of my videos there on either YouTube or VStream. But for now, that is going to be it for today. Uh, I'm going to do a little YouTube outro before I look to a meteor shower on VStream. So, I think uh, I'm just like starting to learn this stuff right now, so. My, if I'm maybe understanding something wrong or maybe if I struggle with something let me know down in the comments below if you're live everyone's welcome always to chat this will take me time to learn so this is always a Tuesday's live stream thing uh, but I will try my best to like start like actually drawing stuff on the software itself I do want to learn how to use it first and I feel like that last part I read about the color I might have just have to just skip it because it didn't feel too relevant to me honestly but anyways uh, just a little YouTube outro and uh, thank you all for watching and um, hope you enjoyed is the video and i hope to see you all next time bye bye